Millions of workers in a variety of workplaces are, or could potentially be, at risk of occupational exposure to bloodborne pathogens. Bloodborne pathogens, commonly referred to as BBP, are pathogenic microorganisms that are present in human blood and can cause disease in humans. Risk of occupational exposure means you could reasonably anticipate skin, eye, mucous membrane, or parenteral contact with blood or other potentially infectious materials that may result from the performance of your job duties. The most common cause of transmission in the workplace is when an infected person's blood enters another person's bloodstream through an opened wound. Preventing occupational exposures to blood or other potentially infectious materials can prevent occupational infections. The purpose of this training program is to instruct on the ways to limit exposure to bloodborne pathogens. The contents of this program include OSHA's Bloodborne Pathogen Standard, Exposure Control Plan, Bloodborne Diseases, Preventing Exposure, Personal Protective Equipment, Engineering and Work Practice Controls, Exposure Incident Procedures, Training. Because of a significant health risk associated with exposure to viruses and other microorganisms in the workplace, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration published the Occupational Exposure to Bloodborne Pathogens Standard. This standard places requirements on employers whose workers can reasonably anticipate contact with blood or other potentially infectious materials, such as unfixed human tissues, certain body fluids, and other means of exposure. The OSHA standard addresses items such as exposure control plans, universal precautions, engineering and work practice controls, personal protective equipment, housekeeping, laboratories, hepatitis B vaccination, post-exposure follow-up, hazard communication, training, and record keeping. In order to reduce or eliminate the hazards of occupational exposure, employers must implement a written exposure control plan if employees risk occupational exposure. The plan details must include employee protection measures. The exposure control plan must be readily accessible to all employees and should be reviewed annually. The plan must examine each employee's potential exposure to blood-borne pathogens based on their job duties. The employer plan must describe the methods, such as engineering and work practice controls or personal protective equipment, that will be used to limit or eliminate exposure. The employer must update its plan when changes in technology may further reduce or eliminate exposure. The plan must describe investigation procedures to follow if an exposure incident occurs and show documentation of the required annual update process, including non-managerial employee participation in the development and updating of the exposure control plan. There are many different bloodborne diseases. Diseases such as hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, which leads to AIDS, are the three which are of the greatest concern. Medical advances have helped individuals with hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV, and AIDS. These individuals may lead fairly normal lives, but bloodborne diseases can still be painful, dangerous, and even deadly. Hepatitis B is a virus which affects the liver. Most cases of hepatitis B don't last long. The body's immune system typically will fight the virus off in a few months and then is immune forever. Unfortunately, some people are not able to fight the virus and end up with chronic liver infection. 
Such infections can lead to liver failure, cancer, and even death if left untreated. Some common symptoms of hepatitis B include fatigue, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, nausea or vomiting, joint pain, jaundice. There is a vaccine available for hepatitis B. Employers must make the vaccine available at no cost to all employees who are at risk of infection. OSHA requires employees to sign a declination form should they decline the hepatitis B vaccination provided by the employer. The declination form states that the employee understands they are at risk of acquiring hepatitis B due to their occupational exposure to blood or other potentially infectious materials and are declining the free vaccination. Hepatitis C is a viral infection that causes inflammation of the liver and can cause major liver damage, liver cancer, liver failure, and even death. Many people who have hepatitis C are not aware because they show no symptoms. People can live for years and not be aware they have hepatitis C. For this reason, the Centers for Disease Control recommend a one-time screening test for anyone at increased risk of infection. If detected, hepatitis C can be treated and in many cases, cured. HIV is a virus that attacks the body's immune system, specifically the CD4 cells, which help the immune system fight off infections. Untreated, HIV reduces the number of CD4 cells in the body, making the person more likely to get other infections or infection-related cancers. Over time, HIV can destroy so many of these cells that the body can't fight off infections and disease, which ultimately leads to AIDS. Symptoms of HIV, which usually occur two to four weeks after infection, mimic flu-like illness and may include fever, chills, rash, night sweats, muscle aches, sore throat, fatigue, swollen lymph nodes, mouth ulcers, if you have any symptoms of any type of bloodborne pathogen disease, it doesn't mean you have one of the viruses. Each of these symptoms can be caused by other illnesses. If you have these symptoms after a potential exposure, report it to your supervisor and see a healthcare provider immediately. The only way to determine whether you are infected is to be tested. This training program covers only workplace or occupational exposure and will not address sexual transmission. Occupational exposure to bloodborne pathogens most often occurs through parenteral exposure. Parenteral exposure occurs when pathogens enter the body through breaks in the skin or mucous membranes through such events as needle sticks, human bites, and skin abrasions or cuts. Two preventative approaches to exposures which should be followed are known as standard precautions and universal precautions. Standard precautions are the minimum infection control practices used to prevent transmission of diseases. These can be acquired by contact with blood or other potentially infectious material such as body fluids, any unfixed tissue or organ, and mucous membranes. These practices should be used when providing care to all individuals, regardless of suspected or confirmed infectious status of the person, and include hand hygiene, use of PPE, and safe injection practices. Universal precautions is a common approach to infection control, whereby all bodily fluids, except sweat, are treated as if they are known to be infectious. PPE should be selected based upon the type of expected exposure you are facing. 
if contact with or splatter from a potentially infectious material is reasonably anticipated, then PPE should be worn on the areas of your body that are potentially exposed. It is especially important to cover mucous membranes, skin abrasions or cuts, and your hands. PPE could include gloves, mouth and eye protection, gowns, aprons, lab coats, caps, shoe covers, resuscitation barriers or CPR masks. Disposable PPE should be properly discarded after use. Other forms of contaminated PPE may be reused after proper decontamination. Your employer should provide, free of charge, any necessary PPE. However, it is the employee's responsibility to wear it properly, maintain it in proper condition, and to request a replacement item when the PPE is unusable or worn out. Contact your supervisor for the location of PPE at your facility. It is important to remember PPE has limitations. It must be properly worn, maintained, and should be discarded if damaged. Engineering and work practice controls are designed to reduce the likelihood of an exposure incident. These controls have limitations and should be used in conjunction with other methods to prevent exposure. These controls will vary with each workplace, but may include readily accessible hand washing areas or proper antiseptic hand cleaner and paper towels. Using biohazard signs, labels, and containers to properly identify contaminated waste. All containers should be closable, constructed to contain all contents and prevent leakage, and appropriately labeled or color-coded. Always make sure to properly close the container prior to removal to prevent spillage or protrusion of contents during handling. The proper color for biological contaminated waste is red or red-orange bags or fluorescent orange labeled containers. These containers should be disposed of properly through your supervisor, an area hospital, or other properly designated biohazard disposable facility. Controls also include handling contaminated laundry as little as possible. Laundry should be transported in appropriately labeled containers and must be properly laundered. The use of safer needles and sharps disposal containers as required by the Needle Stick Safety and Prevention Act is another engineering and work practice control. Employees should never break, bend, recap, or remove needles. In addition to needles, any sharp object, such as broken glass, should only be picked up by mechanical means, such as a brush and dustpan, and should be disposed of properly. Finally, limiting certain activities in areas with possible bloodborne pathogen exposure is required. This includes no eating, drinking, smoking, applying cosmetics, or handling contact lenses in potential exposure areas. Policies, procedures, and needle stick devices are required to be re-evaluated for effectiveness each year. An exposure incident is when blood or other potentially infectious materials make contact with eyes, mouth, other mucous membrane, non-intact skin or open skin, or by piercing the skin. If an exposure happens, it is important to follow set procedures, first by stopping and limiting the exposure to yourself and others. Thoroughly and immediately wash any exposed area of skin with antiseptic soap and water. Flush eyes, nose, or mouth with water. Report the incident to your supervisor or appropriate management personnel. Properly clean up the area if this is your responsibility. 
Make sure proper persons are notified if it is not your responsibility. Your employer should provide proper bloodborne pathogen cleanup materials. Proper cleanup steps are Make sure you are wearing proper PPE. Contain any spill using absorbent barriers. Remove used absorbent materials. Disinfect the area with a germicide or 10% bleach solution. Never mix bleach with ammonia or acid. Dispose of contaminated materials into properly marked containers. Discard or decontaminate PPE. Complete an incident report that describes the incident, including the routes of exposure and identity of the source individual, if known. As a result of an exposure incident, your blood should be tested for diseases and the test results should be discussed with you. Appropriate treatment options will also be recommended by a healthcare professional and your employer will be notified of certain information. The source individual's blood may also be collected and tested if consent is received. All associated expenses are to be paid by the employer and the employee has the right to complete confidentiality of all results and treatments. You will also have the opportunity to receive the hepatitis B vaccination if you had previously declined it. OSHA's Bloodborne Pathogen Standard requires employers to provide information and training to workers. Employers must ensure their workers receive regular training that covers all elements of the standard, including, but not limited to, information on bloodborne pathogens and diseases, methods used to control occupational exposure, hepatitis B vaccinations, and medical evaluation, including post-exposure follow-up procedures. Employers must offer this training on initial assignment, at least annually thereafter, and when new or modified tasks or procedures affect a worker's risk of occupational exposure. Bloodborne pathogens can create a very serious situation in the workplace. Always pay attention to the training provided by your employer. Do not take the training lightly. Know how to properly handle an exposure and report all incidents in accordance with your company policy. Be aware and be safe. <laughs>